Yeah, so thank you so much um, uh, for having me today and uh, giving me uh, this opportunity to uh, share my recent PhD project. And uh, so I'm Ray Ying, and uh, I'm a second year PhD student in the University of Bristol. And uh, um, this is my recent PhD project uh, um, um, developing a plantic forum model based on uh, ecogeny. So, um, so first, uh, please give me um, opportunity to share uh, my collaborators. So um, my collaborators is Fanny Montero, Jimmy Wesson, Danny Schmidt, and they are all my supervisors. And uh, we also have Maria Grigorito, who developed the first version of Foreign Progeny. So first of all, we need to understand what is foreign and why they are important. So foreign is a group of marine zooplankton. So they are important not because they are having very high living stock, but because they are important part of um, carbonate pump. So this is an image of plankton foreign. This is their test, which is blonde hair, and uh, this species also have span. So both of them are made up of uh, calcium carbonate. So basically, um, when foreign go die, um, this kind of calcite marrow would sink into the marine sediment and therefore become an important part of marine carbon cycle and uh, uh, influence our um, climate. Fora is also interesting in ecological context because they don't have many species diversity. They are around 50 species in the modern ocean, but they have very abundant trade diversity. So for example, these species have span symbiont and uh, um, test, which is classification trait. So basically, it means they can be mixed of and uh, they can receive more energy from the uh, solar light or uh, prey other um, zooplankton or phytoplankton. But for the other species, they actually don't, you know, have all the same um, trait. Some species, for example, here, they are just uh, transparent, which means they don't have symbiont. Some species, they don't have, you know, a span, and uh, they also have different size, different morphology. And also, for is interesting because they have actually accumulated a lot of um, tests in the marine sediment. So basically, they have very abundant fossil records. So we can not only study in the modern ocean, but also give the uh, uh, potential to study the paleoecology. So um, knowing the fact that fora is important, but the, the other two is it's not easy to study foreign ecology in situ. First of all, investing foreign is not uh, easy because uh, it's always costly and the best. For example, here is a, a tidal ocean um, sampling station. So they use the plankton net to collect the, the surface water, like a top 10 meters. But actually, this is best for foreign because um, fora is influenced by um, seasonality a lot and uh, they can dive into the thermocline depths. So um, investing data is not that easy. And the uh, culturing is also the same. So, so far, there's even no second generation of fora successfully um, cultured in the lab environment. So basically that's why we need to build a fora model and. Uh, why I need to um, start it. So um, this is a, a, a list of existing forum model. You can see um, three out of four are actually species-based, and uh, they are also building a higher resolution uh, assistant framework. Uh, species-based is very good for the model ocean, but actually you cannot simulate uh, the foreign ancestor because all the foreign species in the past would be very different and uh, and uh, you cannot use the modern model to simulate the past. So basically that's why we have the foreign ecogeny V1, which is um, developed by um, Maria. And uh, we build a trade-based model in ecogeny, no, 
actually we are not building uh, the trade based model. We extended the ecogeny, and uh, because ecogeny is having the relatively lower resolution, so we can run the model very fast, run it in the long term, like a geological scale. The only limitation of the first version of EKG, from ecogeny is that just uh, um, one forum group included. So that's why um, we want to extend it. And uh, this is basically this study to solve. So um, for those who are not in, um, familiar with the ecogeny, let me introduce you a little bit. So left panel is a typical um, uh, basic setting of ecogeny. So the, the top one is uh, basimetric and the, the, the bottom one is just uh, the sea surface temperature. You can see there are uh, 36 by 36 uh, horizon grays and uh, there are also uh, 16 vertical levels. And the top is, is which is um, 80.8 .8 meter is our ecosystem is in. Ecogeny, of course, is a trade based model. So the functional group inside it is determined a lot by the uh, body size or cell volume, like the red panel shows. And uh, what we are doing is just to add more functional group in Ecogeny. First of all, we divide the um, forum into four groups according to if a species have a symbiont or span or not. So we have a two by two matrix and the four functional group as total. Um, right uh, cartoon picture here is basically illustrate how a, a functional group looks like. So for example, for A, which is just a long hair, it's just a, a illustrating of a test. So we model this by add a uh, classification to the existing two plant uh, functional group in ecogeny. And uh, for the symbiotic for uh, then we have some um, uh, symbiont, which is uh, chlorophyll, looks like here. And uh, we just change two plankton to the mixture of, which is also building in the ecogeny. For spanos for uh, then we add some uh, spam to the existing A and B. So this basically is very easy to um, develop this model. We reuse the ecogeny codes, um, building the existing functional groups. And it's also very simple because we don't assume any uh, trait uh, uh, interaction. For example, the band, span those four actually, they should change their feeding behavior, but we don't show it in the model. This is also our limitation. So for example, the span those Oh, sorry, the symbiotic forum like B actually can live without the existence of symbiont. And uh, however, for the, the functional group D, they actually just be the opposite. So they have to bear the symbiont to live, otherwise they will die very quickly. But we don't have such a, a definition in our model, basically. Um, this basically a, a source of our uncertainty. So let's see how we can model the different traits. First of all, we need to know their benefit and the cost. So for example, in the classification part, we certainly know the, the cost is extra metabolic cost. They probably re reduce their um, maximum growth rate or they have higher respiration rate. But the benefit here is still uncertain. Uh, so what we are doing is assume the benefit of classification is to uh, reduce the mortality rate and the prey productivity because it's very intuitive uh, uh, existence of tests that should protect for and from those predators and those virus bacteria. And uh, for span, it's also very similar because you know span is also made up of uh, calcite, so the cost is same. That also you know looks like not very eatable because yeah, and uh, so the productivity also slow goes. And uh, for the, another benefit of span is they actually is very um, optimistic species. So for example, in the blooming season, they actually react earlier than other groups. 
So we model this kind of feature by reducing the half saturation constant. For example, this is a monod equation. We can reduce the k value here, then we can achieve a higher grazing rate from a solid to dashed land. Last one is um, symbiosis. So uh, recently, you know, the benefit is both autotroph and uh, hypertroph. But uh, the cost is assumed to be discounted ability for each. For example, for the photosynthesis rate, we reduce the maximum uh, photosynthesis rate to um, reduce the, the photosynthesis efficiency. Then we get uh, um, 11 parameters, and uh, we use the Latin high cube sampling to generate 1,100 runs using the same um, structure, which is 8P7Z4F, which stands for eight phytoplankton um, size classes, seven zooplankton size classes, and the four foreign functional group. They are, the foreign uh, group is basically all fixed at uh, 190 micron. And we run the model to a uh, steady state and uh, compare with different uh, data compilation and to get the best one. The data used here is also, I think it's quite abundant already because we have very limited um, foreign data. We can't generate you know, one, one billion data points. That's impossible. So we have plankton light to um, compare with our biomass output sediment champ to compare with our um, carbon flux, sediment core top data to compare with our uh, light heat proportion. So this is our model result and the uh, um, comparison with some data. Left column is our model right is data. So basically you can see for light heat proportion, um, basically the model is where we produce the distribution pattern. And if you compare across different function group, you can see um, non-symbiotic foreign basically live uh, in the high latitude. And for the symbiotic foreign, they have high ratio in the low latitude. So basically, it gives an uh, implication that um, span seems not change the um, biogeography a lot. However, um, symbionts seem, seem to be more important. There are also some uh, misfits between modern data. For example, the light circle here um, between E and F, you can see the higher ratio in the equatorial Pacific. And a uh, possible explanation is um, this group of foreign have high uh, um, resistance to the sediment distribution. So uh, it's just a, a, a possible uh, reason, but we still don't know why. And, uh, this kind of phenomenon also be um, shown in other foreign models. For the symbiotic and spinous foreign, we have um, lower um, ratio in the uh, in the Atlantic jar, and I think it's basically very simple because we have um, not a very complete definition of symbiosis. Actually, they should have higher um, efficiency. I mean, they have. Um, symbiont which can attach on the spans and the uh, photosynthesis rates should be higher. So basically, um, both data and the model can introduce the bias from the for the uh, comparison. This is our living um, biomass resort and it's in a log term scale. So the background is uh, the model resort and the, the dot here is basically the observation. Uh, you can very easily find the model is generally um, overestimating the, the living biomass and uh, is same as the first version of foreign ecogeny. So the reason here is one is the uh, limited data because we have just like uh, 200 samples. We probably don't have a, a good um, glimpse of uh, living foreign biomass. Of course, the, the other reason is from the model. So um, we describe this as a systematic issue because when we um, go to the next step, which is about the carbon flux, we actually found that the flux is pretty um, comparable, pretty well. So if we reduce the biomass, then the POC flux would be you know, at the same time 
drill down, then it would be not uh, that good. So we think we cannot balance both biomass and uh, and uh, KOC flux result. But for Fora, we know it's more important uh, as a customer. So we want to keep the um, biomass better than the POC flux. Yeah, so this is uh, the POC flux result. Left uh, is the spatial distribution. Right is some um, summary, like a mean standard arrow across different uh, surface grades. And also we have some total um, production rate has mentioned. So basically you find, um, you can see from the mean and the C, you can see for the first group, which is this here, it basically have very high um, variability in the data. You can see the extreme value, which is um, right here, that basically in the upwearing coastal region, which is our model not good at because of the um, greater distribution. And uh, also, they are, the, the sediment champ data is, you know, developed it in at a different water depths. So um, this also creates some um, temp, uh, some vertical variability. For the um, third group here, it's also um, a strange thing that uh, our model is generating higher. Um, POC flux than the than the observation. I think uh, because in the observation the in the high latitude they should not be um, bearing any symbiont, but in a model they don't have the ability to choose the environment. So possibly this is a reason to explain it, but uh, we will we'll continue to see um, why. So having those POC flux. Um, model data comparison, we basically have uh, some kind of confidence in this result. So we further push the model. We approximate the POC flux to PSC, which is calcite flux here. We summarize all the foreign group and we generate a, a map like this. So this is a calcite export at 80.8 uh, 8 meter. And uh, this is, I think it's basically the first mode estimation of uh, foreign cassette. Uh, the other one in the in the Shebel 2002 using plankton net do the same estimation. And uh, the result is slightly higher than our estimation, but I think it's understandable because their estimation is at 100 meter, but ours is 80.8. The ratio is all, also, um, of higher variability because it's a, a observational data, but uh, the 20% uh, ratio here is actually just a, a mean value. And uh, also we have the different uh, um, contribution proportion of uh, different groups. So for example, the higher value, higher ratio for the uh, same beyond balance, which is uh, basically living in the high latitude but lower for the symbiotic, which is in the low latitude, especially in the um, subtropic jar. So this is basically uh, what our model does. And uh, we can use this model in many, many um, application contexts. So for example, I want to see how the, the foreign diversity change through the past 170 million years is driven by um, something. So we can use the model to explore it. For example, we can go to the KPG and uh, see why uh, the, the, the marine system can cover from the KPG in like uh, 1.6 million years. Also, we can model this uh, foreign community to the, to the future using different uh, IPCC uh, scenarios. Yeah, so there are many possibilities in this model. So to, in conclusion, we extend our uh, chip-based uh, foreign inclusivity model, and uh, we extend uh, more functional groups of foreign, and uh, we can run this model in the geological scale, and uh, we can predict uh, carbon biomass, POC flux, that abundance, and we can approximate calcite flux. But we have higher um, confidence for the carbon flux 
uh, right here abundance, but uh, lower confidence in the biomass. And uh, we also learned uh, uh, we still have very limited understanding of the foreign trade trade off uh, because uh, we still have very limited observational and uh, exper experimental uh, studies of foreign. Also, the sampling bias of uh, observational methods also create some uh, uncertainty in this study. Yeah, so basically, this is our um, model. And uh, yeah, please give any comments and questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, it's great to um, hear these talks about all sorts of different organisms. So it's kind of really exciting. Um, questions? Very nice talk. Um, I wonder, um, I found very interesting that you include um, the spikes in the model. It's first time to see that you may have a, a penalty of having a spikes to have like um, lower growth rate or half saturation constant. Uh, do you do you have seen any data? It's very interesting and. Probably it's the case, but uh, is there any data to show that um, trade-off? That would be really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So uh, as I said, it's just a, a, a assumption for the um, trade trade-off of span and the symbiosis. Unfortunately, we still have no um, studies uh, illustrating what the exactly uh, mechanism of it. So yeah, it's just assumption and uh, yeah. Um, other questions? Um, I, I I had one which was just um, how uh, large is the um, the calcite uh, the the PIC um, sinking yeah. relative to something like do you have coccolithophores for instance in the model? Is that how big is this number relative to say autotrophic calcification? Yeah, so um, there is a uh, coccolifera in this model. Um, I think uh, Fanny Monteo does this work, but I, I don't have many um, communication with, with her and uh, compare with the, the other functional groups. I think it should be uh, similar, but uh, I think it's lower than the pit port because, um, yeah, I think people should, should have, have the highest uh, Proportion and the fora and the cochlear flow should be like the same level. So, so this should have a big impact on the alkalinity, for instance, in in ecogeny. Yeah. Yes. Because, uh, yeah, calcite basically increases the alkalinity and uh, increases the uh, pressure at the, the surface ocean and the, the atmosphere. So it uh, is, yeah, increase the the carbonate system which is not good for us. Great. An important piece to include then. Um, we have an online um, question. So Ken, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, uh, uh, thanks a lot for, for your talk. Uh, I understand the, the difficulty of getting these models, but it's still a little worrying that, um, that the biomasses are almost a factor of 100 off. I also understand that you then choose to calibrate kind of to the fluxes uh, because that makes a lot of sense because that's what you want in the end. But it does indicate that either the observations are extremely biased, I mean, a factor of hundreds, or that there's something else uh, in the model that doesn't quite add up, that there's a higher drawdown uh, per biomass, for instance, than, than you expect. I wonder if you could elaborate on your thoughts about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think... <laughs> It's possible for two functional groups. For example, um, for the um, non-symbiotic fora, this is possible. So we can, you know, using different parameters and we can get a, a good result. And this is basically what I do the first. But we found this uh, impossible for the symbiotic fora because uh, if you do, do this, you draw down the biomass of then then there will be quickly change their distribution. For example, they will just have like one land here or just uh, two locations having the biomass. So yeah, basically 
we can do for two groups, but not for all. Okay, yeah, I see. Other questions? Mm. No? In which case, let's let's thank Wu again. Thank you. Thank you.